Hey everyone, we're back with another video. I'm sorry for the hiatus, but today I'm going to answer my first question from a subscriber. Fatih Dirk asked me to make a video on setting the input and output levers on the axe effects. Sorry if I butchered your name, man. Uh, if anyone else wants me to try to say their name, go ahead and subscribe and leave me a comment letting me know that you subscribed. But today we're going to go ahead and answer his question as well as some other initial setup concerns. Okay, so first, after you get everything hooked up and powered on, and I already have a video on how to set up your Axe FX a few different ways, so go watch that and decide what's best for you and let me know. But the first thing you want to do is go into your I.O. settings and set the instrument input. The input should default at 49.8%, then just adjust it until your hottest signals start to tickle the red LEDs on the front panel input meters. That's how Fracker explains it, and it just means that you only want to start hitting the red when you get the hottest signal from your guitar. You know, when you play those big open loose palm mutes, picking pretty hard, nice and heavy. And the red LEDs light at negative 6 decibels, below clipping. Now the important piece of information to know is that the inputs on the axe effects are compensated. The output from the converters are adjusted inversely so when you're setting the input you're not changing the volume, you're only optimizing your signal to noise ratio going into the converters. Most of this information can be found in the owner's manual, link in the doobly doo as the vlogbrothers would say, and that manual has a wealth of information so if you ever have any concerns you can always try looking there first or just drop me a comment and I'll try to make a video or reply back if it's simple. Now as far as setting output levers, that really just depends on your exact situation and setup. I can't speak to each one, but I can at least talk about mine. I like to keep all the blocks in my signal chain at unity gain, so I leave the levers at 0 decibels or at 5 for those that go from 0 to 10. But that's not a hard and fast rule, you may want to turn some things up and some things down such as running a drive a little higher into the amp block so you can hit the amp with a hotter signal as you would in real life with an actual pedal and amp. But all of that isn't really necessary. The important thing for me is to set the output level with the output block itself, or lately I've been using the volume and pan block. I've been experimenting with this so that I can control the volume with the expression pedal on my MIDI controller, the Boss GT100, and I have that in the signal chain before the reverbs and delays because I like to let the signal trayers fade out instead of chopping off all the noise with the main output. If you want me to make a video on that too, just like this video and leave me a comment to let me know. Then I set the actual output knob on the front of the unit to max. I do this because I run a stereo output into my interface and I can leave the inputs on the interface set at the right spot and both inputs are already set exactly the same. Maybe that's lazy, but I like to set it and forget it and only use one knob instead of three. Then I don't need to worry about setting the inputs on the focus right every time and trying to match them perfectly. Lastly, a quick note, if you're clipping, so the red LED is on the front for out one clip or out two clip of lighting, then just turn down the output of one of the effects. The amp block might be a good place to start. Or use the output block or the volume pan block. It doesn't matter, just find what works best for you. And I should note that the input settings will not cause you to clip. If the axe effects isn't clipping on the way out, but at the attached equipment is, like your interface, then just turn down the output knob on the fractor or turn down the inputs on the attached piece of equipment. That probably goes without saying, but sometimes it can be easy to get distracted by everything. But that's all I have for today. This may seem like a deep hole to go down sometimes, but it doesn't have to be. There's still a lot of information that we could discuss, but this video is already long enough and I've covered quite a bit in my previous videos. So go check those out and please share them if they're helpful. And let me know if there's anything else you want me to cover. Maybe I'll start an FAQ sort of series in the future. If this is the first video of mine you've seen, or maybe you've already watched a couple, then consider subscribing so I can help and have conversations with people like you. You've been awesome. Thanks for watching.